<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Educated Colin Snap Channel. How you doing? Today, we're going to be answering a question I've been getting nonstop. The Spotlight Cash System was released today, and people are asking, should you open your caches or should you save them for the Spotlight System? I did some math, and hopefully we have a, uh, a realistic answer, so let's begin. So first of all, you know, definitely there's some people that just, just want to know the answer and leave, and I definitely like to address it for them. So my overall take, my generic answer will be you should save your caches for the spotlight system unless you need high evolutionary or spider head. Now those two cards I think are notable enough that you want to get them before the system drops because one of the downsides of the system is that you don't have control. So you're kind of at the mercy of what cards are featured into the system. And High Evolutionary Spider Ham, I think right now, are two prevalent enough cards that you want to have them in your collection. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out and buy them, but you need to at least have the tokens to get those two cards. So that's going to be 6,300 and 3,000 tokens, right? So 9,000 tokens or, you know, less depending if you're missing just one. So the reason why you want to save it, it's going to be easier to get the card you want from the spotlight system than from tokens at the current rate. So we're going to go into it, break it down, but this is just a generic answer for people that just want to know that and leave, right? Two minute video. All right. So next up we have is the general strategy for getting the cards you want. So the safest strategy in this new system is to save up four spotlight caches for the card that you want that month, right? So um, anytime a card is revealed, it's going to be in a pool of four cards, the cards, the new card, two featured cards of second dinner's choosing, and then a random series four, series five card. So as you go, you, you pull from those pools, one out of four. And if you want to guarantee the card you want, if it's that fourth, fourth option, then you're going to have to use all your spotlight systems or spotlight caches. So you want to save up so you can always guarantee the card you want. You're not always going to have to use those four, but if you really like a card, you really want to have it, then it makes a lot of sense to have four in the backlog. So you can always just say, okay, I'm going to get this card. So you can generally save around four caches per month. So you can generally guarantee around one card of your choosing per month. Now let's talk about this current system and how much tokens you get per per the system per the boxes, right? So here we have the current system. It takes around 6,000 tokens to get a new series five card. And here we're going to be talking about what you get per 40 boxes. So for a series three incomplete players, you get around 100 tokens per box and then take 60 boxes to afford a series five card. So it's like 44,000 tokens you get. Then you have, then you, we have to include the gold. I almost didn't add this initially, but well, you need to, you get 6,000 gold from 6,000 to 600 tokens from 800 gold. It's a 0 0.7 conversion rate I'm using, which is around what token Tuesday, the new token Tuesday is obviously you can't use the old token Tuesday bundles because they're not going to be available readily. So generally it's going to be around 600 tokens per 800 gold. And then you also get a free series four card every 40 boxes, which is an extra 3000 tokens. So overall for a series three incomplete player, you're going to be getting around 7,600 tokens worth of cards every 40 boxes. And then for a series three complete player, those you're getting a little bit more tokens per box, 125, which ends up being an extra uh, thousand tokens per box. So every 40 boxes, you'll get 8,600 tokens, which is like generally accurate i would say when when i do the math so that's the current system per 40 boxes right now and then let's look at the new system here so the new system right it'll take 40 boxes to guarantee the new card you can get it earlier but for the guarantee it's going to take you 40 boxes if you have the featured card and the random series four cards then you're only going to get that one new series five card a month, right? So that's going to be 6,000 tokens. So if that's all you're getting, 
right? You have the featured cards, you and you have the randomly chosen series four, series five card, then you're getting two spotlight variants, you're getting a premium mystery variant, right? But in terms of progression, you're only getting one new card a month, which is 6,000 tokens. Um, and But for each featured card you're missing, you're getting an extra 3,000 to 6,000 tokens. Normally there's probably like, on the low end, you're gonna get just series four cards. So it's, it's just 3,000 tokens, but series fives are in the pool and you can realistically get them. So that'll be an extra 3,000 to 6,000 tokens per card that you are missing in your collection. So when we do the math, it means that there's a range for your token rewards in this new system. It can be as low as 6,400 because we have to include the 400 tokens you are getting as a series three incomplete player, but it can be as high as 18,800 tokens. Now that's assuming you don't have any of the cards in the featured uh, of the featured cards. And you also don't have the card the random series four or five card as well. So that that's, I'm assuming that's one series four featured, one series five featured, and then you hit a series four from the random series four or five cards. So you can see there's a ginormous range uh, between the, um, the token rewards per month. Most likely, if you have a lot of cards, it's gonna be like 6,800 because the 6,400 is if you're, if you're not series three complete. But if you are not series three complete, you don't have all the series four, four cards like you don't, right? So most likely you're going to be, you're going to be able to get something in the featured. So the less series four or five cards you have, the better the system is, right? Because if you're missing cards, when they become featured and you spend your 40 boxes, you're going to get an extra series four card, an extra series five card, that's really gonna make this system feel good. So the downside is if you have everything right now, well then the max you can get is a new card per month, right? So it's not going to feel as rewarding. However, you are getting those spotlight variants, which for some people is pretty enticing. Myself, I don't really care about that. I'm, I'm really just looking at it from a progression standpoint. Now, something interesting in this that we're talk that I haven't really addressed right now is that do you need to use your four spotlight caches every single time to get a new card? No, you don't, right? So there is a chance one out of four to get the new card in the first spotlight. There's a one out of four chance again in the second spotlight, one out of four chance again in the third spotlight, and one out of four chance for it to be your last spotlight. So there are some times where you're going to just open that first spotlight cache and it's instantly gonna be the card, the new card that you're looking for, and then you're done, right? You don't have to use any of your caches. You got it in the first try, you're done. Now, what's the average that that's gonna happen? How many spotlight caches do you have to open on average with this system to get the new card? That's gonna end up being 25. Uh, or 2.5 caches essentially, but 25 boxes, right? Cause it's every 10 boxes you get one cash, spotlight cash. So around 25 boxes, you need to open to, to get a new card on average. So that's a little bit better than the 40 that we're talking about. The 40 is the worst case scenario, but the average scenario is the 25 uh, boxes. Now, when we look at that, now that's the number we need to be looking for, for comparisons in this new system to the old system. That's the major number. And when we look at that, you end up only getting around 4750 to 5300 tokens in value per 25 boxes in this old or current system, which is not enough for a single card. So it is relatively comparable right, compared to like 6,000 tokens. Uh, if you are series three complete, you're getting like 5,375 tokens, which is, which is quite like, it's not bad, but it's, it's still less than the, the new system. So why, why would you open your caches now, right? So we've talked about how you're getting a little bit more value 
with this new system if you save your caches. But why would you ignore that advice and still open them now? So there's flexibility. I think that's the one of the main points, I would say main advantages for opening your caches right now. You get tokens, right? And tokens allow you to react to things, right? So let's say there's a card that you want that you don't have, right? With the with tokens, you can just say, I'll get in the shop like in, in a couple of days. Where with this new system, you're kind of at the mercy of second dinner adding it into the featured uh, card pool. So there's you don't really have that much control in what cards you're going to get. Obviously, Series 3 cards, you're going to have a lot of them. And then Series 4 cards, and so they will rotate. But in terms of like when will a particular Series 4, Series 5 card be featured, it's not that likely, right? There, you're really only getting like nine nine featured cards a month, which is not a lot. So uh, it might take multiple months for the card that you want in particular to be uh, the featured card. So that um, that is definitely a downside of the system, something you have to be aware of. A uh, second thing is if you want ultimate variants, right? So ultimate variants, 5,000 tokens in the shop. Like you're not going to be able to afford that once this new system goes through. Like that's too expensive. That's multiple months, almost half a year of saving just to get an ultimate variant. Like it, your brain is, well, I hope like un unless you're buying token bundles in the shop, your brain is not going to let you make that purchase. So if you like ultimate variants as a particular one that you want, then you might want to get 5,000 tokens so you can buy that. So that's something to think about. And then the last thing is if you really want a card right now, uh, so the two that I would say are very important to get in the meta right now is High Evolutionary and Spider Ham. Those two cards I think are very important, very strong, and very prevalent in the future if things don't change. Now, you could always say the patch is June 11th, what if they change High Evolutionary? What if they change Spider Ham? Well, what if they don't? You're absolutely screwed, right? <laughs> like you have no fallback plan where, oh, they didn't change High Evolutionary in a way that's uh, not as prevalent, or they didn't change Spider Ham in a way where it's it feels very relevant in your decks, and now you don't have the tokens to save up for it, and then you also and also they're just newly car released cards. It's very unlikely that it's going to be immediately a featured card. So you are just like at the mercy of, <laughs> of the world at that point. So I would say you want to you wanna make sure you got those cards just because of how strong they are in this current meta. And that would definitely be a reason to you open up your caches right now, get enough tokens to get those two cards, and then you could maybe save the rest. So I would say... Those are some of the reasons why you might want to be opening up your caches. But overall, it's better to save. There's a better progression system for players if you save up your caches and then use them strategically to get the new cards that you want. So overall, right, I am saying to save your cash. Per 25 boxes, you get at least a new card, which is 6,000 tokens with the new system. You also could get more than that, way more than that, Plus you also get those unique spotlight variants, which some people might like. And then with the current system, you get around 4750 to 53. So, you know, around 5,000, 5,400 tokens with this current system. So it's, you definitely get more with this new system mathematically. Now, what are the downsides of the system? We've go gone over some of them, but I want to have like a, a slide with some of the downsides, right? I would say a major downside is there's no flexibility. So if you miss a week with a card you want, it's going to take quite a long time for that card to be featured again, right? You're not getting that many featured cards per month. So you're going, it's going to take multiple months, most likely for you to see that card again. So if you miss out on a null, right? You really want null, uh, like the likelihood you get null randomly with this new system is kind of low. You have to go and hit the random series five card and then that random series five card card has to be null. It's not likely. So you're kind of at the mercy if you 
miss that week of the feature card that you're looking for. So that's a big deal. And then second of all, if a card gets buffed or nerfed, you might change your mind, right? So let's say, you know, Nimrod got buffed recently, right? Let's say, oh, Nimrod was featured a while back. Well, now you can't get this new Nimrod. You can't use your tokens to be like, oh, I really want to play Nimrod now. Like that's out of this question, right? Since uh, you have to wait for that fe for that card to roll in the featured system to realistically get it in a reasonable time frame. So there's no there is no way to really adapt to some of the buffs and nerfs of of what happens in the patches with this system. So that's that's definitely something to keep in mind. And then when you are pulling for the card that you want, you have to pull with whatever card is featured in. So let's say Jeff is featured and you really want Jeff. And then the new card is something you don't want to play with, you don't care about, you think is not very good. And then the other featured card is like, you know, I don't know. What what if Snow Guard, right? <laughs> the other featured card is Snow Guard. But you really want Jeff. So you're like, okay, I'm going to have to pull here, even though I don't like the new card, I don't like the snow guard, but I really want Jeff, right? And that could realistically happen. So you're at the mercy of pulling where, um, wherever the card you want is, regardless of what's next to it. So that's, that's a particularly, you know, frustrating situation where you don't really get to control exactly where you're using your resources. So I would say that's some of the issues of this new system, uh, but there's, there's more, <laughs> there's a little bit more. So here there, there's also a loss of tokens and gold, right? I think this is pretty obvious to people, but it has to be mentioned. You are, there's no more gold in the collection track and that's around 800 gold you lose per month which with the 0.7 conversion rate that I'm using, which is the token Tuesday bundle conversion mostly, that's around 600 tokens you're losing per month. And then also tokens drop from 4,000 to 5,000 tokens per month to around 800 to 400 to 800 per month. So that's a huge drop in your token acquisition rate. So it's not really going to be feasible to, to be saving tokens in a reliable pace with this new system. You do get slightly more credits. So it used to be like 50 per box. Now you get 52.5. So that's an upside a little bit, but obviously it's not enough to equal the downside of, of, of losing your tokens and the downside of losing your gold. Uh, something that people have been asking a lot uh, that I did want to answer. Uh, if you, it's in there, if you want to look at it, but how many tokens do you get per series five? Like the fallback, if you've completed series three, series three, right? How many tokens per series three? If you've completed all series threes, how many you get? If you look at these images, so for series three incomplete, you're getting 400 tokens per month, right? And then for series three complete, you're getting 800 tokens per month. So you're only getting 400 tokens extra from your eight series three collection rewards. So it seems that in the spot of those series three cards, you're only getting 50 tokens per back, back instead of a hundred. Now I don't like this. I think it's unnecessary rigid. Like is, is this enough? Like obviously people are very used to the a hundred tokens per kickback and even that is like not that much but people are used to it and cutting that in half i think is going to make people feel like cheated in a sense so i i, I definitely don't think this is necessary to make it this bad i guess but this is the decision obviously they did some math and this is the conclusion they went with oh we're going to we're going to make it only uh 800 per month instead of a hundred, um, instead of a thousand two hundred, which is what it would be, uh, if it was a hundred per card. So don't understand it really. I'm sure there's some math that they put, but I, I don't know if it's worth the negative, uh, you know, sentiment <laughs> personally. So I don't really like this, but this is just, uh, an answer to the question. How many tokens are you getting per series three card? If you are series three complete, it seems to be 50 and then. Last, not last, but like one of the 
extra downsides is that cards moving from series four to series three will happen less frequently. So this feature, this is a this is a quote from them. This feature requires a healthy supply of series four and series five cards to function more than our previous system could maintain over time. So we can see this is where the flexible drops uh, are incorporated into the system where they need good enticing series four cards to be, or a series four and series five cards to be rewarded. Where with the old system, you were guaranteed after six months and every new card would be in series three. So you could just, um, you could just wait it out, right? But now you can't really do that. It's very likely that the underplayed cards will eventually drop to series three, but any card that is feeling very strong, very popular, very played, those cards likely will stay in series four. Uh, minimum right like series five probably could drop down to series four because it's not that much of a difference in the weighting but series four cars going down to series three i think are not going to be as common as it was before where you could guarantee all oh, three or four cards are moving down so that's you know that's a very disappointing but it seems to be something they're moving forward with so that's something to be aware of but overall, when we talk about it, overall, I do think this change is better for progression. So we did the math, right? It's a little bit better than our current system. You do lose out on control. You do lose out on flexibility and series drops also suffer as a result, but everyone should mathematically, unless I'm wrong, get more cards overall. So. That's better, like as a progression focused player myself, right? That makes me like the system because it's better. The, you know, you do have to be paying attention. You do have to know what you want, right? Imagine pulling for a card that turns out to be really bad, right? Like that's going to hurt a lot. So you have to be very aware, very confident with your choices. Make sure you are paying attention. But generally, this should be better for almost everyone. So hope this answers the question that people were asking. Should you save or should you pull or should you use your caches right now in a reasonable way? And feel free to critique. I don't care uh, about that. Just I just want the correct information to be given to the, the people here. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it makes sense. Take care of yourselves and have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm sure like there's some people being like, damn, this question takes 20 minutes to answer. Yes, yes, it does. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, see ya. Educated calling the snap. Once you watch him, you won't go back. He'll teach you tomorrow, snap. Your skills will be.